Hello and welcome to another yoga sequence. Today we'll be doing another Mark Stevens sequence, sequence number seven. And the focus is on back bending. So we'll do a little bit of back bending, nothing major, just enough to make you feel nice and open through the heart and through the chest and help get our posture better. So things you'll need, you may need a block, uh, always blankets if you have some. Otherwise, just you, and uh, that's it. Let's get started in Sukhasana Easy Pose today. So sitting up nice and tall, maybe even on a blanket. I have one folded up here, kind of nice. And let's just bring our hands to the knees. And once again, lengthening through the spine. I like to even do a little shoulder circle, up, back, and down to be sure that my shoulders are nice and low away from the ears. And as you're sitting up nice and tall in Sukhasana, I know I have a tendency to lean forward, trying to stack one vertebra on top of the other, on top of the other. So we don't want to be leaning back too much, but completely perpendicular to the ground. Once you're in good alignment, lifting up tall, close the eyes. Just taking a few moments to get settled. Letting go of anything you're holding on to that you don't need right now. Any cares or worries, just letting them all float away. Knowing that this time is just for you to learn and grow. Taking the next few moments to set an intention for your practice. So an intention is a quality or a virtue that you wish to cultivate on or off the mat. A lot of benefits to yoga follow us off the mat, like better sleep at night or more energy during the day. So just picking one of those benefits, or maybe it's something different. Maybe it's increased strength or flexibility. I'm just holding on to that thought for a moment. Here, start to take a few slow, deep breaths through the nose. And slowly open the eyes and we'll get moving. Let's begin with Vidalasana, which is our cat dog tilt. So we come up to hands and knees, hands just slightly wider than shoulders width apart. And from here, we'll take an inhale as we drop the belly, arch the back, and lift the chin. As we exhale, we'll reverse course. So curving and rounding to the spine, tucking the chin. And again, inhale, drop the belly, arch the back. Exhale, curving and rounding, tuck the chin. Again, inhale, really trying to smooth out the motions, arching the back. Exhale, pressing that space between the shoulder blades high to the sky. Last time, inhale, drop the belly, arch the back. And exhale, scoop the belly, pressing that space between the shoulder blades high to the sky. And release back to neutral. From here, we'll head back to a child's pose. So we'll allow the hips to melt back down towards the feet. 
either bringing your arms forward in Uttita Balasana or along your sides in the traditional variation of Balasana. Whatever feels better for you. Taking a moment, settling in. starting to come back up again hands and knees one more round of the loss and a cat dog tilt so hands and knees we inhale arch the back lift the chin see if you can go a little bit deeper the second round without pushing too hard belly scoops in as we exhale curving and rounding again inhale drop the belly arch the back Nice and smooth. Exhale, curving and rounding. Again, inhale, arch the back, lift the chin. Exhale, curving and rounding, pressing that space between the shoulder blades high to the sky. Last time, inhale, arch the back. Exhale, curving and rounding. Inhale, back to center. Next up, we have Anahatasana, Heart Chakra Pose. So from hands and knees, we start to walk the hands forward, but keep the hips above the knees. So we don't want to let the hips go forward. They can even be back just slightly. So arms go forward, and the forehead reaches towards the floor or a block. And feel that nice stretch in the shoulders. If you have extra mobility, feel free to move the chin towards the floor and then it's heart moving towards the floor. So come out, belly scoops in, we walk the hands back to our hands and knees position. And then from here, we make our way all the way up and back to Adam Pushmanasana, downward facing dog. So toes tuck under, hips go up and back to a big V, maybe walking it out that first one. Starting to feel that length through the backs of the legs. Keep some snaps and crackles. That was a hip. Earlier, there was an elbow, if you didn't catch that one. From here, start to walk the feet forward towards the top of your mat. Just hang out in a forward fold so feet are parallel to each other, softening through the neck. Just letting gravity help that forward fold. And then slowly ragdoll one vertebra at a time. All the way up to standing. If you feel lightheaded at the top one, palm to the forehead for a moment. And we'll get moving. We'll start with classical Surya Namaskara, sun salutation. So up at the top of your mat, heels and toes together, standing nice and tall. We'll inhale, send the arms way up high. Remember, we have options for arms. If the shoulders need some more space, feel free to step them apart to parallel or even slightly wider. Otherwise, we press the palms together and reach up nice and tall. On the exhale, gliding forward using the glutes as you descend all the way into your standing forward bend pose. Inhale, palms to shins, looking up to the horizon for flat back. Exhale, down, step the right foot back, 
way back, gently lower the knee, untuck the toes, sweep the arms up for Anjani Asana, low lunge pose. Here just for a moment to feel that stretch, and we'll float the hands down to the floor, tuck the back toes under, front foot steps back for plank pose. Preparing for Ashtanga Pranam, eight limb salutation, it's like a little inchworm pose. Keep the hips up high to the sky and then lower sequentially, knees, chest, chin. So knees, chest, chin, arching the back. And then scoop through to the belly. Point the toes, peel the chest for a cobra, like a little baby variation of cobra. And release, belly scoops in, pressing up and back to downward facing dog. We're not here long, we move right into right foot steps forward. Back knee gently lowers, untuck those toes, sweep the arms up for Anjani Asana on the other side. We're not here long. Float the hands down through lunge. Back foot steps forward all the way into flat back. On the exhale, forward fold. Inhale, long sweep all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. Other side, inhale, arms go up. Exhale, gliding forward. Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, this time left foot steps back. Back knee lowers, untucking those toes, feet the arms up, trying to move as smoothly as possible. And float those hands down through lunge, stepping it back to plank, preparing for our inchworm posture. Hips stay high, knees, chest, chin, arching the back. Scooping through, point the toes, strong legs for little baby cobra, and release, pressing up through, hands and knees up and back to downward dog. Left foot steps forward, back knee lowers down, untucking those toes, sweeping the arms. So getting a little smoother each round. Heading down through lunge, this time back foot steps forward, all the way into flat back. And release. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, and returning to a tall mountain. Again, see if we can go a little bit smoother. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, gliding forward. Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, right foot steps back and lowers. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, plant the hands. Inhale to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, scoop through and cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot steps forward. See if you can use the same inhale, back knee lower. Same inhale, come on up. And then exhale, hands go down. Inhale, all the way back foot steps forward into flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, reaching up high. Exhale to a tall mountain. Other side, inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, left foot steps back, back knee lowers. Inhale, we sweep. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, front foot steps back to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, arching the back. Inhale, scooping through, little cobra. Exhale, release, 
and downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward, back knee lowers, one foul swoop all the way up. Exhale, hands to the floor. Inhale, back foot meets the front all the way into flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. Exhale, to a tall mountain, last time. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, for flat back. Exhale, plant the hands, right foot steps back, back knee lowers as the toes untuck. Inhaling, we sweep up. Exhale, plant the hands. Inhale, front foot steps back to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, scooping through, peel the chest. Exhale, release, and downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot forward, back knee down, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, back foot steps forward into flat back. Exhale, down. Inhale, all the way up, reaching up high. Exhale to mountain, last time, last side. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, gliding forward. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, down, left foot steps back, knee lowers. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, plant the hands. Inhale, front foot steps back to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, scooping through, peel the chest, pointing the toes. Exhale, release, pressing up and back to down dog. Left foot steps forward, back knee lowers. All in inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, back foot steps forward, all the way into flat back. Exhale, down. Inhale, all the way up, reaching up high. Exhale, to a tall mount. Inhale, arms go up. We're going to sneak into some sun salutation A's, just a couple. Exhale, gliding forward, nice and smooth to your forward fold. Inhale, looking up to the horizon. Exhale, down, sending both feet back to a strong plank. And lowering chaturanga. Inhale for cobra or up dog. Exhale, release and downward facing dog. Holding here for five deep breaths. Or you can find a child's pose if you're looking for a little rest. And send the feet forward all the way to the top, landing with those heels and toes together, looking up to the horizon for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. Exhale to a tall mountain. One more. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, gliding forward. Inhale for flat back. Exhale down, send the feet back. Strong plank, belly scoops in. And lower, chaturanga. Inhale, up. And exhale, downward facing dog. 
few deep breaths. From here, instead of completing that sun salutation, let's sneak into the next posture. So from here, right foot steps forward, back heel stays up high to the sky for an Ashta Chandrasana Crescent Pose. All the way up the arm sweep and bending nice and deep. This one is such a great pose. Trying to draw the right hip back as we, almost like you're trying to tuck the tail under, but we're not actually tucking it under, we're getting neutral pelvis. So thinking of the center of the spine, the bottom of the spine facing directly down, that should get you a nice stretch on that hip flexor. Also using the front glute, if you're not feeling the glute and you're only feeling the quads, Padabandha. So lift those toes up, press down into the floor just to get it active, and then you can press the feet. Or English, be good right now. We've been here a while. Let's move on, because it's even funner after this. Let's bring my hands to heart center. Crescent lunges, they're my favorite. It's probably why I'm procrastinating here, because I love crescent pose. So again, really try and use the glutes. So press down to the floor to straighten the knee. Back heel is still up high to the sky. And then we bend. That was one. Inhale up. Exhale bend for two. Inhale up. Exhale bend for three. Feel the glutes. Inhale up. Exhale, bend for four. Last time, inhale up. Exhale, bend for five. Heading down through lunge. Either do a full vinyasa or step it back to down dog or child's pose between sides. Just take a moment. And then we'll prepare for the second side. Left foot stepping forward. Back heel stays up. Arms sweep up. And then we hold here for a little bit on account of I was talking and stuff and got confused and procrastinated and all that. So we want to be equal for both sides. So blah, 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 quads, I think I was talking about. Try not to use them so much as your glutes. So feel the Front heel pressing down into the floor, maybe lifting the toes up, Padabandha. You can bring the hands to heart center if you like, because we'll be going soon-ish. Feeling that nice, I really love that stretch, the hip flexor stretch. From here, ready? We inhale to straighten. We exhale to bend for a one. Again, inhale, straighten. Really trying to feel the glutes. Exhale, bend for two. Don't let the quads do all the work. It's hard to really isolate. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend for three. Almost done. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend for four. Last one, inhale, straighten, exhale, bend. From here, we head down through lunge, remembering our options. So either a full vinyasa, if that's in your practice, or step it back to child's pose, or maybe a downward dog. And send the feet forward. We'll complete our last sun salutation. Inhaling for a flat back. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale all the way up, reaching up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. 
From here, we'll prepare for sun salutation B. So we're getting a little bit warmer. Sun cell B is what really gets us nice and warm for our stretches coming up. So heels and toes together, standing up tall. We'll start into the asana mountain pose and then move forward into utkatasana powerful pose, bending the knees deeply, sweeping the arms. Really trying to use the back body strength. So whether your arms are parallel or the palms are together, try to draw them back, 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 back. On the exhale, gliding forward. Inhale for a flat back. Exhale down, heading back to plank, both feet step back. And lower, chaturanga. Inhale for cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Preparing for a Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Right foot steps forward, back heel spins down. Sweeping the arms up, trying to make that into the three movements, one. So one continuous flowing movement. We just got there, but we're heading down through lunge, stepping it back through plank, and lowering chaturanga. Inhale for cobra or up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Other side, trying to make it one movement. So super smooth, left foot forward, back heel down, floating all the way up. And then we float down through lunge, back through plank, and lower chaturanga. Inhaling for cobra. And exhaling, downward dog or child's pose. So do take those breaks if you'd like. Sometimes we need a break. Sometimes we just want one. Either way, listening to your body, what does it want? <laughs> For some reason, I have the word chocolate going through my mind over and over again. Okay, not that. You can take a child's pose, but no chocolate right now. We don't stop yoga for snacks. Okay, this is me talking to myself. Usually, usually we don't stop for snacks. Let's carry on. Send the feet forward all the way to the top. Inhaling for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Heels and toes together. Bend the knees deeply, sweeping the arms. Utkatasana, powerful pose. Exhale, standing tall. Once more. Bending the knees, sweeping the arms. Utkatasana. Powerful pose. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, down, stepping it back to plank. And lowering chaturanga. Inhaling up. Exhale, down. Warrior one, right side. Like it's one movement all the way up, down through lunge. This part is smooth as well. Plank and lower, connecting each movement. Inhale up, exhale down. Left side, like it's one movement all the way up. Exhale down through plank. And lower. Inhale up. And exhale. Downward dog or child's pose. Few deep breaths. And send the feet forward all the way to the top. Inhaling for flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Heels and toes together. Bend the knees, sweeping the arms. Utkatasana. And standing tall. Returning to Tadasana Mountain Pose. So it should be nice and warm now. From here, we'll step or hop the feet apart, preparing for Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. And send the right foot facing to the top of your mat. 
Left toes tip in just ever so slightly. Really trying to keep those hips square to the front. Arms go up to a T. Inhale to lengthen. On the exhale, we bend. Knee right over top of the ankle, so if it goes beyond, you know you're ready for a little bit wider stance. Looking beyond the right fingertips. Belly scooping in just gently. Shoulders down. Trying to feel that right glute again. So if you're not feeling it, Padabana, lift those toes up. Just to get the glute activated. If you're still not feeling it, if you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, then try pressing into the heel and you should feel the glute activate. And then try to keep it activated as you lower the toes down. That's what I was trying to say before. From here, straightening through that front leg, letting the arms relax for a moment, and flip de flip. So left toes towards the back of your mat, or the other side, and the right toes tip in just slightly. Arms go up, inhale to lengthen. Exhale, we bend the left knee, thinking about the weight going in towards the pinky toe side of the foot. That helps to use the glute of the left side. And we bend. Double checking, back arms right behind you, front arm right in front of you, and breathing, looking beyond the front fingertips, which is now the left. And straightening through that front leg, releasing the arms, we'll flip de flip again. So right side, we start in warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, and then we move on to extended side angle, which is the Parshvakonasana. So there's a few different variations. The first one is set the forearm onto the thigh, and then the upper arm is alongside the upper ear. So I'm not touching, but alongside palm facing down. This is phase one. If you want to go a bit further, you can keep that top arm pointing towards the front of your mat. Place the hand down onto a block or maybe the floor on the outside edge of your foot. The finest variation is a bind. If you bring the right arm or the bottom arm through and then try to find the arms behind you, find some fingers behind you. If you can't reach them, that's okay too. Breathing deep. Opening up the heart towards the sky. Slowly release, coming back through warrior two and changing sides. Pointing the left toes out, right toes in just slightly. Moving through Virabhadrasana two, warrior two. Bending the left knee and double checking your alignment first, then heading into the same variation as you did on the first side. So even if you tried the bind and you're like, it didn't work out, try it on the second side too. So phase one or two or three. There I go. A side angle isn't complete without a little shoulder pop for some reason. Belly scoops in, coming back through warrior two. And straightening and release. Flip to flip, this time preparing for Uchita Sam. Triangle pose. Trikonasana, we did a trikonasana. So for trikonasana, we're not as wide of a stance. So warrior two is nice and wide, solid foundation. We teach a trikonasana triangle is also a very solid foundation, but not as wide. So stepping it in a little bit, but same starting point. Arms go up, reaching, 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 like you're reaching along a shelf, trying to find something, like reach the wall. When you can reach no more, tipping, tipping, place some weight into that shin. So the whole palm rests on the shin. Top arm high to the sky. Eventually, the hand will be right holding onto the ankle. Eventually, eventually, the hand will be on the floor 
on the outside of the front foot. Opening up. Belly scoops in, come on all the way up, and release. We'll flip over to the other side. So left toes point to the new front edge, or the back side of your mat. Right toes tip in, arms in a T. And same thing again, reaching, 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 reaching. And then dipping, dipping, dipping. And breathing deep. Belly scoops in, floating all the way up, and release. From here, we'll prepare for Eagle Pose, Garudasana. So standing with the feet just slightly apart, let's root through. I'll face you in mirror, okay? So I'll use my right leg, but you use your left. Does that make sense? So left leg is our supporting leg. Right leg crosses over top, bending both knees, but be sure to keep the supporting leg right in the center line. So don't let it tip out, but more likely it's going to want to tip in. So the way I try to help my body just not do it is by pressing into the pinky toe of the supporting foot. It's really hard to torque inward when you're pressing into the pinky toe. So the right crosses over the left. If available, those right toes tuck right behind the calf and then arms forward and we wrap them around each other. So the right arm goes beneath, and we cross the elbows, back to the hands face each other, and then the right hand moves towards your nose, and then on the other side, palms connect, eventually. For a lot of us, if your shoulders are a bit tight, uh, it's just not gonna happen today, and that's okay. Breathing deep, really thinking about the pinky toe and the supporting foot. And unraveling, unwinding, release. Other side. So transferring that weight onto the right foot. Again, being sure that we have that just that straight ahead alignment. So don't let the toes tip in or the knee tip in. Pressing into the pinky toe, left crossing over right. If available, tucking those toes right around the calf of the opposite leg of the supporting leg. Pressing into the pinky toe. And I've said that like four times, but it's real important from here. Other side, we wrap around. So this time, left arm underneath. Backs the hands face each other. The left hand moves towards the nose. And then finding the palms. Oh, you want to do it. And slowly. Unraveling, unwinding, and release. From here, I'm going to pause for a sec. Just a sec. I'll be right back. See, I'm back. I didn't go far. I promise. Preparing for Prasarita Padakonasana C. So we step the feet apart, about one leg's length apart, and the feet are parallel. So toes pointing forward, and this is the best bit. We interlace the fingers, but behind the back. And if they don't stay palms together, that's okay. They might kind of go like this behind your back. And then we straighten through the arms. So they might be palms together to begin with. And then when we straighten the arms, the palms come apart. All good. It's fine. On an inhale, we lift through the heart. On the exhale, we head forward. Long straight spine and try to bring the arms away from the back as much as available. A few deep breaths here.
On an inhale, belly scoops in. Come on all the way up. Nice and slow and smooth, long, straight spine. And release the arms. If you feel lightheaded, one palm to the forehead. I always do feel lightheaded with that one. Sometimes if you have low blood pressure, it's, um, it triggers a bit of that fainty feeling. It's all good. You just need to give your body a chance to relax. The body's so resilient. It's like, oh, feeling faint. No, just kidding. All better. So, but for some reason, that palm to the forehead really helps. The next one, we start in the same position. We'll bring the hands to the hips. On an inhale, lift through the heart. On the exhale, forward fold, releasing the hands, fingertips to the floor. From here, a nice twist. So keep the right fingertips on the floor and open up the left arm high to the sky. So it's just a nice little mild twist. Really try to open up through the heart, but keep the low back facing the floor. So we're trying to get that mid back to twist. The shoulder opens. This one's called Parivrita Arda Prasrita. Basically just means twisting, lots of twisting. On one inhale, lengthen. On the exhale, heading down. Other side, right arm sweeps. Same thing again. So try to keep the low back facing the floor and opening up through that top shoulder. So you feel that mid back twisting. Couple deep breaths here. One more inhale, lengthen, exhale, release. From here, inhale to lengthen for flat back, exhale, hands to the hips. On the inhale, come on all the way up. Again, if you feel lightheaded, one palm to the forehead. Just take a moment and release. Coming back to the top of your mat, heels and toes together. We flow just a little bit. Classical sun salutation. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, gliding forward. Inhale for flat back. Exhale, down, right foot steps back as the knee lowers. Inhale, we sweep up. Really sinking those hips, even though we're moving quite quickly. Exhale, down. Inhale, plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra, just a little one. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, right foot steps forward, back knee lowers down, sweep the arms up all the way up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, all the way to flat back. Looking up to the horizon. Exhale down. Inhale all the way up. Board for Hastasana, hands up close. Exhale to mountain. Other side. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, left foot steps back. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, scooping through. Little baby cobra. Exhale, release and downward dog. Inhale, left foot forward, back knee down, sweep the arms. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, all the way to flat back. Exhale, down. Inhale, all the way up, sweeping up high, getting taller. And exhale to a tall mountain. Next pose up is on the floor. But we have to get there safely. So instead of just sitting, we'll flow. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, down, heading back through plank. And lowering chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or up dog. 
and exhale, downward facing dog. From here, gliding forward to plank and lowering all the way down to your belly. Preparing for Shalabhasana, locust pose. So squeezing the legs together, straightening through the legs, pointing the toes. From here, the arms are along your sides, palms facing up. So the backs of the hands are on the floor and the fingertips are reaching towards the back wall. From here, squeeze the shoulder blades together so the shoulders will come up off the floor. Point the toes and the toes are so pointed, the legs are so straightened that they fly and float right up off the floor. Not a lot, as do the arms. Because of the action of the shoulder blades squeezing together and down the back. Fingertips reaching towards the back wall, fingers together. And release. From here, belly scoops in, pressing up and back to a child's pose. Whichever arm position you prefer in child's. And then once again, coming up, gliding forward, and we'll lower onto our belly. From here, our peak pose of the day is Cobra, Bhujangasana. So we usually do that in a nice flow, but rarely do we take the time to use it as a standalone posture. So on the belly, pointing the toes, starting with a baby Cobra, using just the strength in your back like you could do no hands. And then if it feels okay for you to gently press into the hands until you feel a gentle stretch. Now, with Cobra, the pelvis remains on the floor, so my hips are securely on the floor. If the hips lift up off the floor, that's up dog, so that's a different pose altogether. So we're here just for a few deep breaths to feel a nice stretch. That's already about three. Four. And five, slowly lower. You can stack the hands and place the cheek on the hands for a moment and soften into the space that you just worked. So the back body, allowing it to soften. <sighs> it feels nice, but we're not done. <laughs> we need to go again. So same thing again, planting the hands, point the toes, Feel the chest off the floor, and if the last time didn't stretch that much, just an extra little side note, you can bring the hands, so I start up with my hands beneath the shoulders, but you can bring them back a little bit, and what that does is as you come up, you go a little bit higher, so the shoulders are down. Lifting the chin ever so slightly. So we want a nice even curve throughout the whole spine. You know, some people say to keep the neck neutral, but that's what we would do if we have an injury in the neck. If your neck is healthy, it just try it. If you're up quite high in cobra, then continue the natural curve of the spine. So a little bit, lifting the chin. It's hard. There's muscles that are working. It's really good for you. And then slowly lower down. Other cheek to the hand. Last time. The same thing again. Pointing the toes. If you want to go a little bit further, bring the hands back a little bit more. And here we go. Feel the chest. And lifting the chin. And slowly release other cheek. Or your forehead. So you can each cheek once. Go forehead to the hands. 
And from here, let's take a child's pose. So belly scoops in, pressing up and back to child's pose. From here, we'll flip over onto our backs and lay all the way onto our backs, preparing for Sachi Bandha Sarvangasana Bridge Pose. So laying all the way back. And bending the knees, placing the feet on the floor, hips width apart, just a teensy bit wider. The feet are parallel, as are the legs, arms along your sides, palms facing down. The hips lift up high to the sky and try to create as much space between your body and the floor as available. If you'd like to go a bit further, interlace the fingers beneath you and tuck each shoulder beneath you nice and carefully. Keep the gaze directly forward, which is now at the ceiling. So looking at the ceiling, creating lots of space between yourself and the floor. And breathe and create. To come out, release the hands, untuck the shoulders gently, carefully, and lower the hips down to the ground. Hug the knees in for Apanasana. Maybe a little rock side to side. And from here, we'll prepare for Supta Parivartanasana. So it's our one-legged twist. However, I'm going to add a little. If you would like to do twisted roots instead, feel free. Because I like it. So, once again, if a one-legged twist is better for you, feel free. Otherwise, arms out to a T position. And I'm shuffling the whole way because I don't have very much room against my birds here. So if you're doing the one-legged, I still like to start with the legs bent and the feet on the floor. Right knee moves towards right shoulder. We lift and scooch the hips over to the right. So hips go to the right. So now you're askew. And then we send the right knee over to the left as the bottom leg straightens. If you'd like to do twisted roots, it's exactly the same. You just bend the bottom leg and your legs are crossed. Most importantly, keep the shoulder on the floor, both shoulders. One shoulder wants to pop up off the floor, don't let it. This ensures that we are twisting in the mid back. It is okay for the low back to twist, but with the weight of the leg and the leg might be hanging in space a bit, you can place the knee on a block. But if we let that shoulder pop up off the floor, what happens is the low back takes the twist and the twist comes completely out of the upper back. So when we press that shoulder into the floor, you can feel it too. I don't recommend trying it though because it does feel kind of ugh, on the low back. And to come out, belly scoops in, pressing the low back into the floor. Unraveling, unwinding. Square everything up. I like to do a little apadasana between sides, so hug those knees in. A little squeeze, maybe gently rocking side to side. And preparing for the other side. So feet are on the floor. We'll hug the left knee into your chest, or the knee hugs itself in. And we'll scooch those hips over to the left, like a fair amount, like a, it's like a full lift and scooch, right? And then the bottom leg straightens as the left knee moves over to the side. Keep both shoulders planted, especially that left one, to go into twisted roots. 
cross the legs. And allow the knees to float down towards the floor. To come out, scoop the belly in, press the low back into the floor, unravel and unwind as we square everything up, hugging both knees into your chest for Afanasana. Maybe a little rock side to side. Preparing for Ananda Balasana Happy Baby. Clasp onto the outer edges of the feet, if available, or the shins, whatever you can find. And then Trying to keep the sacrum on the floor, so the tail won't stay on the floor. There's a tendency for the spine to curve, and we want to keep the spine neutral. Then soles of the feet face the sky, and we gently draw the knees down towards the floor. Just for a few deep breaths here, that's already two. Three. Four. And five. Once again, hug the knees in, little rock side to side, up on asana. From here, we'll roll over onto the right side. Pause just for a moment. And then slowly press yourself all the way up to seated. We'll prepare for Dandasana Staff Pose. I'm going to smile while I do this pose. Because it's a good pose, that's why. Lifting up nice and tall, shoulders down, pressing the heels of the hands into the floor. Keep going. Hold on to it. And release. That pose. Maybe one day my heels will touch the floor. Probably not. The heels on my hands. Preparing for Bharata Vajrasana. Uh, first variation or A. So for this one, let's move actually from the Nasana staff pose. What we do is bring both of the legs over to the left side. So like so. I've got my right foot beneath my left thigh so that both my feet are just kind of kind of over to the side. You can actually have your foot underneath the ankle if you want. The knees are just slightly apart, facing forward. From here, lifting up nice and tall, we take a twist. So try to keep the navel pointing forward. We're just twisting the mid back. And right hand moves to the outer edge of the left knee. The other hand moves behind you, maybe finding your thigh. Lifting up tall. The fun part about this one is we get to look, <laughs> I don't go out much, this is fun. We get to look the opposite way of our twist. Normally in yoga, we look in the direction of the twist. This one, we look the other way. Why is that fun, you ask? Because it feels like tango dancing. Everyone who like actually does tango dancing out there is like, I don't know what you're talking about. But I don't do tango, so I feel like a tango dancer because you're kind of sassy. So you lift up through the heart, but don't lift the chin. The chin stays parallel to the earth, which is probably not like tango dancing at all, but I feel like tango dancer. And breathing deep. And we unravel and unwind. Return to the Nasana staff pose and prepare for the other side. So sweeping those legs over to the right so that the left foot is just beneath the right ankle, knees are slightly apart, and here we go. Lifting up tall, we twist to the right this time, and the left hand moves to the outer edge of the right knee. Other hand, finding the thigh, lifting up nice and tall, 
And then we look over the left shoulder. So we look to the left, lifting up, but keep the chin level to the floor. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, unravel and unwind. From here, we move into another twist. Actually, I'm going to find a block for this one because you probably won't need one. But if you have shorter arms, a block is kind of helpful. Marichi Asana C. From here, we're in the Masana. Bend your right knee and bring the foot in towards the sit bone. Lifting up tall, the block, if you have short arms, goes behind you. Then, the right hand goes behind you. If you have long arms, you can just go ahead and press that heel, the hand right to the floor. The back arm is there to keep you upright. There's a tendency to lean back as soon as we do this twist. And that's what we don't want to do, because then the low back will take the majority of the twist. We want to isolate the mid back. So you can either tent the fingers if you don't have longer arms, or find a block so you can really press the heel of the hand. I like to do that. My fingers can reach the floor, but I prefer to really ground into the heel of the hand as my left elbow crosses over. You can see I'm kind of hunched right now. We want to get rid of that hunch by lifting the sternum up as we twist. Breathing deep. If your arm doesn't cross over, you can hug the knee in for an easier variation. We're here just a little bit longer. And slowly unwind and release. Other side, so left knee hugs in. And same thing again, left hand goes behind, really grounding, and cross the right arm over, or hug it. Opening up, most importantly, lifting the heart up. There's a tendency to want to hunch, don't let your back do that. Lifting the sternum, it's like you're lifting the sternum to the sky as you open up towards the side of your mat. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, and round one mind. And our next posture is Gomukhasana cow face pose. So from here, we'll come into hands and knees. You might still need your block to sit back on, or maybe even two blocks. So from here, the left ankle, or the whole leg actually, crosses behind the whole right leg. And then, once your knees are all scooched together, Step the feet apart. Then sit back onto your block or blocks or the floor. Ah, and feel a nice stretch. All sorts of memories of last practice coming to me. And a little tighten the hips. Must have done some good glute strengthening recently. So lifting up nice and tall. We'll add the arms. Just give me a moment to sit into my Oh, we'll go out, so now here we go. Right arm goes up, sending it back. Left arm goes back, sending it up. If you have tighter shoulders like I do, it takes a moment. It takes some time to get those hands together. And it took me forever to even get the clasp at all. So what I did at first was I clasped onto the bottom of my shirt, the top of my shirt, or used a belt or a yoga strap. I actually never used a yoga strap for this one. I just sort of faked it until it, all of a sudden I could feel my fingers behind me. And slowly, slowly release. And again, especially if you have tighter shoulders, for me it takes forever. And then I get these little chicken wings arms for a sec. And then it suddenly feels nice. 
other side, we're going to come out. Belly scoops in, reaching the weight forward. And I like to do a nice down dog between sides, just to get that circulation going again in the legs. Maybe walk it out a little bit. Then lower through hands and knees, preparing for the other side. This time left, or yeah, left is in front, so right crosses behind the left. Scooch those knees together, feet apart, sitting back onto your block. or blocks, or maybe the floor. And just taking a moment, just with the legs first to get started. When you're ready, left arm goes up and back. Right arm goes back and up. Taking all the time you need. Slowly, slowly release. And because that was my dominant arm behind, take an extra second with chicken wings. Just a sec. And then and then it feels lovely. To come out, belly scoops in as we shift the weight forward, heading up and back to that downward facing dog once again. Walking it out a little bit. And then lowering all the way back to seated. So through hands and knees, come back to cross-legged, bring the hands or the hands, these hands, feet forward. And we'll prepare for Pachimottanasana, our forward fold, seated forward fold. Reminder, keep the hips as they are. So be on the squish. Don't pull the flesh away because we want to keep the hamstrings, tendons healthy. Inhale, lifting up tall. On the exhale, reaching forward. Finding those toes and lengthening the whole back side of the body. A few deep breaths. And slowly come on up. Preparing for Halasana Plow Pose. So if you're not familiar with this pose, just do legs up the wall pose for now. If you're doing the full plow pose, laying all the way back, I like to hold like me to lay on for my spine. When you're ready, without using momentum, lift the hips up and back. Spending a few moments here. like to go a bit further, feel free to move into Karnapidasana. So we bend the knees and lower them towards the floor. You can keep your arms behind you if you want to. And to come out, we reverse course back through plow halasana. And then one vertebra at a time. Belly scoops in. Use the arms as landing gear. Slowly, 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 slowly. And then keep the spine neutral for a few moments after this posture. 
either with the knees in or feet on the floor, whatever feels best for you. And then preparing for Uttana Padasana uh, prep or sometimes known as fish pose. So from here, let me straighten the legs. Arms along your sides, palms facing down. I need the grippiness of my mat though for this one. And then we lift up the heart high to the sky. And then arching through the back, the head gently drops back, lowering the crown of the head to the mat unless you forgot to take out your top knot, in which case just prop up under the forearms, lifting a bit higher, and it's okay if your head doesn't reach the floor. And slowly release. From here, we'll repeat our twisted Roots pose or our Supta Parivartanasana one legged twist, whichever you prefer. So, right knee in, we'll scooch hips to the right, knee goes to the left. Either extend the bottom leg or tuck it in behind the top leg. If available, looking over the right shoulder. Scoop the belly in, press the low back into the floor, unraveling, unwinding, and other side. So once you're all squared up, then we shift the hips to the left as the left knee lifts up, maybe crossing over, and send those knees or knee over to the right, looking over to the left, be sure that the left shoulder remains on the floor. Scoop the belly in, press the low back into the floor, unraveling and winding. And then hug your knees into your chest. Little bit of an extra squeeze after that one. And from here, we're ready for Shavasana. So if your back requires a little extra support today, keep the knees bent with the feet on the floor allowing the knees to tip them towards each other. Otherwise, extend the legs, arms along your sides, palms facing up, and close the eyes. Softening everything, everything. But especially through the neck and the shoulders. All the way down the arms, letting the fingers softly curl. Softening through the face, softening around the eyes. even the muscle between the eyes. Just letting it all go.
starting to come back. Wiggle your fingers and the toes. And gently roll your head from side to side. And reach your arms above head on the floor. Give yourself a big stretch, feeling totally refreshed. And bend your knees in one at a time. And gently roll over to the right side. And just pause there for a moment as you come back. And slowly start to press yourself all the way up to a comfortable seated position. And when you arrive, palms facing up on the knees. Inhale, sitting up tall. Exhale, softly close the eyes. Taking those final moments to thank yourself for showing up to your practice today and taking good care of you. And slowly open the eyes. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you to Mark Stevens, who provided the sequence today. I'll see you next time.